Hey everyone, today I thought that we would talk about how to actually console another person who's in tremendous pain for all kinds of reasons. And I think we'll start by talking about what not to say. Definitely don't start by saying anything cliched or pat, like, oh, it'll be okay, you'll get through this. Or don't start by focusing on the positive, the bright side, or like the silver lining. Don't say, well, at least you know what you're facing, at least he's in a better place, or it could be worse, things like that. The problem with statements like that is that it could potentially communicate to the person who's grieving or in pain that their pain is so uncomfortable that you cannot tolerate feeling it and you need to like package it up and make it tidy and put it away right now. And what would happen is that the person who's suffering would end up feeling more alone in their grief and feel like other people just don't want to hear about it or don't care about it. And so then what I really think you have to do is to really open up your capacity for attunement, attunement for yourself and for the other person. And you have to start with yourself. You have to figure out whether you're overwhelmed by the news and so overwhelmed that you're either becoming dysregulated and over-emotional yourself or whether you're going on the other extreme of becoming avoidant and numbing out. You have to figure out what you're really feeling because that's the source from which all the right actions and the right words will come forth from you. And whatever you're feeling, don't get judgmental and criticize yourself and hate yourself for how you're reacting. Just observe it and what might help is just a name that that's how you're reacting. And then the next step is that you have to attune to the other person, the person who's grieving or suffering. You have to figure out exactly where they are in this moment that they're telling you this news. Are they in a place where they want to feel what they're feeling? Or is it that they want to not feel at all and push things away? And if you can't figure out where that other person is, then you just simply have to ask them. It doesn't hurt to say, hey, how are you taking this news right now? What do you need from me right now? Do you want to talk about this? Do you want a shoulder to cry on? Or do you feel like, no, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Let's just talk about something funny and light. This gift of awareness and attunement is so important and nutritive for the other person. Many of us who are suffering are so bad at suffering and tolerating pain. None of us like it, obviously, but we try to push it away. And at worst, we beat ourselves up for feeling pain and we say, you're weak and vulnerable for feeling pain. And I think sometimes that kind of energy, like that self-flagellation is good, especially if you're on a battlefield or you're really in a life-threatening situation. But for most experiences of grief and loss and suffering, it's unnecessary. But our bodies always default to that extreme reaction as a way to protect ourselves from feeling too much pain. And the only way that we can ever learn to calm that reaction down is first by activating that awareness of what's going on inside of us and then gently allowing our bodies to learn to tolerate grief and pain. And honestly, the best way that we can learn to tolerate grief and pain is by sharing it with another person. So it all comes back to how powerful our presence is for each other. I hope these ramblings make sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.